Q&A and fan mail! Lovely. My hat today is my tactical bucket, which will be featured in loadout videos eventually. I need to get this started. Next, I have returned from UMBC. It was a lovely event, fantastic. I may do a video about it. I might not. I got no footage of it. None. None whatsoever. There are lots of pictures, though, so I could do, you know, I could do a picture show. We'll see. Uh, well, I have no plans, currently, for any future events this year. Not to say that I won't be going to any, I just don't have any of them planned yet. I was planning to go to Foam Fest and then do a week in Europe, but Foam Fest got cancelled, so I am still planning to do a week in Europe. I think that actually comes up in a question here, so I'll save that for later. Um, uh, but we'll see. We'll see what events I end up going to, whether I'll go to any of the epic nerf battles or if I will go to any more, um, uh, HVZs. I will almost certainly be going to Afterworlds, so, uh, stay tuned for news on that. Let's answer some questions. Michael Nimrod asks, would you ever make a Storm Bolter out of two strifes integrated together? I swear you've asked a bunch of Storm Bolter questions. And, uh, no, no, the strife would not be my blaster of choice. I would go with what Walcom did and use the Hyperfire for a number of reasons. It, uh, it's already full auto, and the shells are very, uh, even on the sides, they're very symmetrical, so they, they integrate better side by side. So that's that's what I would do. I wouldn't use the strife. Loik Flock Anderson. How feasible do you think it would be to make a bull pup bolt action springer comfortable to use? I think it would be difficult. I think it would be very feasible. Because um, here's a bolt action springer. All you would need is a bolt. And, uh, in fact, I'm pretty sure Jankmeister basically made a bolt-action one where it was linked to a bolt up here, and you could just prime it. So, uh, yeah, bolt-action, bullpup springer would not be difficult. That thing is covered in spiderwebs. It hasn't seen the light of day in a while. So very feasible. Beecher 50. What is the best blaster for killing wasps? I don't think I've ever tried to kill a wasp. I mean, anything high-powered enough that if you, and accurate enough that you could kill it up close, but, um, I mean, if you're trying to take them out at long range, that's a real small target. I just use wasp spray, because wasps are nasty. Ben the Wild Child, E750. How many chapters do you like in a typical book you would read? Oh, this... This person is asking the real questions. I don't think it has ever occurred to me to judge a book based on the number of chapters it has. I've read some books that, like, the it was, you know, a, a huge book, but it had a grand total of four chapters. And then I've read books that were fairly small, but, like, every three pages was a chapter. Uh, chapters are not how I judge books. Uh, more, more page number. But even then, I, I've read long books, short books, huge books, small books. Uh, that, that's not how I judge my books, so uh, I, I got no answer for you. Robert Fields. Do you think a backpack f belt fed system is possible for Nerf? Uh, well, this question was obviously asked before Walcom's Moab video came out because we now know it is absolutely possible. Um, it's just not particularly practical. Um, magnificent piece of engineering, but, uh, it, uh, for a lot of reasons, I definitely prefer a proton pack. Uh, mostly cleanup and prep. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it is, it is clearly very doable. I mean, it's one of those things, we have spaceships, we have self-driving cars, uh, and it's possible to do it with real firearms, so it's almost certainly possible to do it with Nerf. And, and as I said, we, we've now seen it, so, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, the Tribunal of the Imagination. Have you tried Sprecher's Grape Soda? Yes, I have. Rex Rigum. How restrictive were the rules for steel armor in Adria? So, uh, nominally, when I was in there, Adria's timeline went from 1066 to 1603, which is the Battle of Hastings to the death of Queen Elizabeth. I believe they recently, at some point in the last 10 years since I last played, they lowered that to like the 700s to 1603. Um, so there's a huge time span that you can draw from. And there really weren't rules about how historically accurate your armor had to be. 
Um, it was mostly around safety were what the regulations were, but there wasn't anything saying you, could, you couldn't have, you know, a 10th century breastplate and 13th century arms and a, a 14th century helmet. There, there weren't anything like that. And most people's armor was completely mixed and matched, and, and most army armor in real life was probably fairly mixed and matched. Um, so, yeah, you could get away with a lot as long as it passed the, the safety requirements. Uh, so, yeah. Swamp Cat, what are you, what are you up to? Where did you go? Are you, you, you are being silly, madam. I'm being stalked. Oh, no. I think the camera's starting to fog up. Can't tell. Pretty sure, though. <laughs> Try to finish this up, then. Josiah Mayfield, what brand of battery tools do you use? I think the one I have here is Milwaukee. Let me check. Nope, that's Black & Decker. Apparently, I use Black & Decker for my cordless stuff. Uh, for most of my, my heavy power tools, they're Craftsman. Uh, I think I've got a Ryobi uh, circular saw. I'm not, I'm not beholden to any one particular brand. Nifomp. How would you improve the DZP Mark III if it was up to you? Well, it is up to me, and I've made a whole series of videos on upgrading it. Um, the biggest thing is that the internals could be a little bit more robust and the rate of fire needed to be higher. Both of which I did. Um, there were a couple of different ways to improve, improve the rate of fire and there's numerous ways to improve the internal, mostly replacing them with more robust 3D printed parts. Django Rum Runner. Who is your favorite mythological god and why? Well, arguably all gods are mythological, but uh, I've always been a fan of Tyr. Uh, the god of glorious deeds, the Norse god of war and glorious deeds, so... Uh, and because I think that's an interesting concept for a god, not victory, not, you know, various other things, but glorious deeds was an interesting thing to be the, uh, the patron god of, so... That's why my minigun is named after him. Red Wolf Midnight. Would you ever get a tattoo of your favorite Nerf Blaster? Knowledge cast. What is a good master key for either a long shot or a long strike? Well, good is a relative concept, uh, is a subjective concept. Um, what are you trying to achieve with said master key? Uh, if you're playing in a game where heavy ammo counts for something, then I would recommend something with heavy ammo. So something mega, something uh, mega XL, a rocket launcher. Um, if you just need to have more darts, then you might go with something full auto. Because the long shot and the long strike are both bolt action. Having something full auto, that gives you something that the main blaster doesn't. Alternatively, a rough cut. You really can't go wrong with a rough cut because it's a shotgun. It fires multiple rounds. You also might go with something that takes shells. That, you know, the, the shell strike or something that, you know, multiple shot. Again, in my opinion, and this is entirely my opinion, you can disagree all you want. Um, the goal of a master key is to provide something that the main blaster doesn't. So heavier ammo, multiple shots, higher rate of fire, more accurate, depending on what your primary is. So yeah, you're going to need to take a look at what you're trying to get out of it and then look at what things can provide that thing. So. Optimus Voltron, how would you, or how well would next generation Starfleet handle a fully operational Death Star? <laughs> And how well will the original trilogy Rebellion do against the Borg? So I actually wrote a research paper in college on Star Wars versus Star Trek technology. Um, and obviously we don't actually know how those technologies would compare because they're both made up. Uh, and a lot of what we see on screen does, is contradicts itself and, and stuff like that. Um, you know, some of the things that the cast say the math just doesn't add up and it leads to ridiculous numbers and, and ridiculous situations. Um, but in general, based on what we know about Star Wars and Star Trek, the Star, War, yeah, the Star Wars universe is about 20,000 years ahead of Star Trek, technologically speaking, depending, again, on how you choose to measure that. You can, you know, I have not watched all of the latest Star Trek media, so who knows what has changed since then, and again, it's all made up. Um, but things like hyperspace is many, 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 many times faster than warp. 
Uh, the whole basis of Star Trek Voyager is it's going to take them 80 years to get home. Well, the Millennium Falcon could make that trip in a couple of hours. That's how much more advanced some Star Wars technology is. But then you have things like transporters, and we don't really see things quite like a transporter in Star Wars. There are various examples of it in various expanded universe stuff and what is and what isn't canon compared for her. Um, but they also have things like ring gates in Star Wars, where it literally is instantaneous. It just creates a, a linked wormhole, and you walk through this side and you come out that side, which is arguably far more advanced than um, teleporters. Um, how do phasers compare to turbo lasers? There's a line in Star Trek where they make fun of lasers being weak, but turbo lasers aren't really lasers. They're more like plasma projectors or yeah, yeah, uh, plasma accelerators. Again, it's it's all made up so who knows? Uh, but in general, my money would be on Star Wars. One, because they have wars in the name. Um, and the, te the, the technology appears by some metrics to be far more advanced. Um, one uh, calculation I saw suggests that just the recoil on the turbo lasers of a Star Destroyer generates more energy than the Enterprise can generate in an entire year. I don't have the math to back that up anymore. I saw that on a website 25 years ago, and it's probably entirely apocryphal. Um, but yeah, my money in general would be on Star Wars. Um, so again, the Rebellion versus a Borg? My money would probably be on the Rebellion, just because of how much train? Just because of how much train. Um, can go ahead and let this go by. And yeah, my lens is all fogged up now. Ah, stupid damp. It's raining here. It is incredibly damp. So my lens is fogging up and there's nothing to be done about it. Oh, you really need to be able to see this clearly to hear me answer my questions. You can't see how ridiculous I look in my hat, though. Anyway, long story short, my money is always going to be on Star Wars when it comes to any kind of a direct conflict because I'm largely of the opinion that Star Trek technology is far inferior to Star Wars technology. And I probably said the wrong words, Trek and Wars, a couple of times over the course of that, and I don't care. Simon K. Hessen. Hansen. With Foam Fest being cancelled for 2023, delayed to 2024, are you still going to Europe this summer? So, as I mentioned earlier, yes, I do still plan to travel to Europe, but probably not in the summer. I'll probably delay it until the fall because the weather will be more to my liking and there will hopefully be fewer tourists. But we'll see. It'll depend on the schedules of the people that I want to visit in Europe. So I'll be working on, with them to try to work out what would be the best time. Um, so we'll see. We will see. And finally, Brandon Keller asks, What game types do you think would benefit the most from having a blaster with a Pyragon Master Key, and which types would benefit the least? Well, similar to the previous question about Master Keys, it depends on what you're trying to achieve. So the Pyragon Vortex Blasters in general, it has a really high rate of fire if you slam fire it. You can fill the, the sky with a cloud of discs, um, which can make it hard to dodge because there's nowhere safe to go, but they're very slow moving. Um, I don't... It, I, if you're playing... I've played some games where Vortex did stuff that was special. The most common thing that Vortex has or at least in most of the games that I've played, is that ricochets with Vortex count. So if it bounces off a tree and hits someone, it counts. And so games indoors with narrow hallways, Vortex becomes an absolute nightmare, and it's magnificent because you can bounce around around corners and just fill hallways with discs and there's nowhere to go. Um, but if Vortex doesn't do anything special, then I don't know that there are... You can create a, a cloud of foam with a full automatic dart blaster and have much be much faster um, and take up less space and be less cumbersome and all of that so I'm really not thinking of anything other than an indoor location or games where Vortex does something special where it's really going to be that much of a game changer but uh, give it a try and let me know all right. Aha! I hit a direct hit okay uh, now I'm going to look at the loot, and so now the fact that the camera is completely fogged might be an issue. I'm also taking this hat off because it's echoing in my brain. 
and we'll see what we got. Starting, we have a letter. We'll get a lot of letters. I like letters. Letters are cool. This comes to me from Dixon. I'm not sure which Dixon. I may know a couple of Dixons. We'll find out if this is the Dixon that I think it might be. Or if it's a different Dixon entirely. A note! Hello, Captain X. My name is Skinny Scouter. <laughs> I thought your name was Dixon. I've been lied to. What's going on here? Explain your stuff. And I have been collecting blasters since 2019. Over the years, I have accumulated around 300 blasters, new and old. I started watching your channel in 2020 when I discovered your Secret Shot Medkit video. That's a good one to have started with. Um, I collect vintage and modern blasters, having a few cool things. What's the coolest inbox blaster you have? I have? See, I'm not an inbox collector. That's never been my thing. Um, that's more of like Walcom's thing, or the there's a, a vintage Nerf collector on... I think it's just the vintage Nerf collector. Nerf collector? I don't know. Uh, but I know a couple of people who their their big thing is inbox stuff. I think the most valuable inbox thing I have is that Supermax 5000 that I've got in a box around here somewhere that um, a, a particular individual has been trying to get off me. Um, uh, it, it's almost certainly going to go to him. I'm just currently holding it ransom for a rare blaster that I don't yet have my hands on that uh, even he is having trouble finding. I may have to cave and just let him have the thing. We'll see. Um, for me, it's a new inbox lock and load. I actually, I don't have a new inbox one, but I do have a lock and load box. Uh, it wasn't new inbox, but I do have the box, or at least I did. I think I still do. I would have sent you something, but shipping is expensive and you probably have anything I would have sent you. Probably, unless you have a Slingfire DX400, which is the one that I'm holding that Supermax ransom for. Um, I would also like to shamelessly self-promote my channel, my new Nerf and Boy Scout related video. Ooh, Boy Scout. Cool. Um, one last thing, I have a red strike recon but it's missing the tactical light attachment if you have a spare one in the red strike colors i'd love to buy it thanks for being cool and funny train now you missed the train the train already went by i don't have the the site i have a couple of the recons and i think i have one stock and possibly one barrel but i do not have the site or the light for it so um best regards skinny scouter uh, do not read on camera mm-hmm this is not for you. Email me about the part. Things, things can be arranged. It'll depend on whether I'm available or not. But uh, by all means, reach out to me. Email me. Um, I got emails down in the description. Uh, we can talk. All right. Let's take a look at the package. This package was supposed to be delivered in person at the latest Borst War, but I wasn't there because I was still in Baltimore. Uh, so it was given to Sergeant Deplorable, who has handed it off to me. There's some notes on the box. This box is not from Rock Auto. How? But it says Rock Auto right there. How dare you toy with my emotions? All right. Let's see what we've got. Yep. Oh, looky, looky, there's a thing. It's a, it's a thing. It's a blast. There's a note. Dear Captain Xavier, my name is Justin. I've been a follower of your channel for some time now, and I really enjoy your videos. After watching your most recent K26 video, where you said there was still one more curve shot rival blaster you needed to acquire, I realized that I have that one still in its box. Ain't never been sniffed. Look at that. I lost my note. And I really wanted to beat you to it and send it to you before you got one, but I then watched your latest Friday fan mail video, and of course, I waited too long! You did. Um, <laughs> either way, I decided to send you that blaster, uh, the Nerf Curve Shot Helix XXI 2000, so that you can do something with it in the future. Also, when you do the K26, could you please test the Helix with that HH Queen Rival ammo. Oh yes. Oh, if I'm firing a, a curve shot, I will use that super light ammo to see what happens. Uh, it would. It will indeed be hilarious. Bangarang, Justin. Well, Justin, you are awesome. If you are a bit late, but now I can do something with this one and something with that one, and we can have some fun. I might make this one <laughs> proton pack fit. <laughs> Cause I can. It would be really easy to just uh, hook up something on that top door. Very cool. Very cool. Anything else in here? No, nope, just paper. Lovely. All right. Lovely. Lovely. We have another package. 
This one comes to me from Halo Scorn, apparently, and there's a picture of a spider. Doobies. There better not be spiders in this box. There's enough spiders in this shop already. I do not need your spiders, sir. A hole! Neat! Uh, it's a drill holster, uh, and these happen to fit any number of Nerf blasters as well. I used one of these to create um, a sledge fire holster. Actually works quite well. I wonder how well that, uh, hand, that, uh, that, uh, that Meowser would fit in one of these. I think the scope would get in the way, but other than that... What else we got? Bit of plastic tube. Is there a note in here? I don't think there There probably isn't. Um, a gizmo holder? Definitely a gizmo holder. It is a holder of gizmos. Hyper ammo? A whole tube of hyper ammo. Neat. I didn't have one of the big tubes. I have one of the short tubes. What do we got here? We've got... Ooh. Um, a box of, looks like, blades, and a folding knife, razor light edge, folding knife in my colors, very cool. I don't usually carry an, an everyday pocket knife, and now I will. And then a bin with some extra blades. I don't know if these are blades for that knife, or if they are random blades. They look like random blades. Fascinating. Fascinating. A cylinder. I don't know what this is. Looks like the water tank off of something. It's weird. It's weird. A bit of plastic. I'm starting to have my doubts about this operation. Oh, uh, muzzle. Very nice. Another even smaller cylinder. Interesting. Hmm. That has potential. A bit of fl <laughs> Some uh, Zing Arrow heads. A squishy... <laughs> an orange construction hat. Stress ball. Neat. This will be my hat for the rest of the video. See how well that works out. Retaliator slide. I think this is a blowgun, part of a blowgun, most of a blowgun, not a blowgun. I don't know what's going on here. Some more tube. Another gizmo holder. Definitely a holder of gizmos. Very cool, very cool. A skull and crossbow, cross, crossbone lanyard. Now that's a winner. Oh, I'm gonna I'm I'm put that on something. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what we've got here. We've got some old style sticky darts, some switches, some lights. These appear to be belt clip safety lights. But they don't appear to have batteries. At least that one didn't. Fascinating. We'll have to see what it takes to make them blink. I don't know what that goes to. Very cool, very cool. Aha! A note! Dear Cap, this is a box of random stuff that I hope you enjoy. The yellow tank is from an old Busby lever action water gun? Really? Neat! I hope you or someone has a uh, used to it to repair a broken one. I would also like to add that I have sent some of your videos to friends getting into modding. Have a nice day. Sincerely, Hello Score. Well, excellent. More people in the hobby is always good. Uh, well, we appear to have a knockoff Chinese warrior Lego figure. Fascinating. I am curious. And then, 
half dark bits. All right, I'm opening this. All yeah, right, well, the weapons are definitely useful and I might be able to make use of that saddle. Um, and that crown, I'm, if, if it'll fit a standard Lego head, that crown would actually be pretty cool because it's different than all the other Lego crowns and I'd be able to make a really neat looking monarch out of it. So that is pretty, pretty snazzy and there is some, definitely some useful stuff in here. This one, this one intrigues me. The little, little three cylinder one. I may have to, may have to make something out of that. We will see. All right, well, as always, you all spoil me and I appreciate your questions and the loot and the, the well wishings and the nice notes and I'm glad that I can help people join the hobby and all of that, so. Uh, yeah. If you want your question answered, uh, put it in the comments of this video. That's where I pull the questions from. And, uh, if you want to send me stuff, mailing address is down in the video description. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Blech!